I guess the biggest thing I've learned over the past decade now of writing grants is that it's absolutely vital that you are addressing a real problem. You know, you may think you're addressing a real problem, but in terms of, especially with SBIRs, if your customer doesn't have the same opinion of you, doesn't value your solution as you do, then you're wasting your time. You have to go out there and do your customer discovery, whether it's in academia or in business. You have to make sure that the research that you're doing has true value. And let's say if you're doing an SBIR, go and find 20 customers, present the problem as you see it, and then, or better still, ask them what, what the problem is for them first of all, and then come up with a solution. But if you have an idea and a solution, go and check with them. Go and find 20 people that confirm it. And then once you've done that, go and find another 20, and another 20, until you've got a real good mass of opinion that supports what you're gonna do. The way I approach an SBIR application is just as I would write a business plan. First of all, you've gotta identify a problem. Then you've got to go to the customer and provide support that that is a real problem. Then you've got to design a solution. Take that design for the solution back to the customer, see if they see value in it. Then you've got to make a budget for that solution. Then you have to put in your, the team in place to do that. You know, what skill sets do you need on the team to test the feasibility in phase one or rigorously evaluate the product in phase two? Then you've got to try and find support from an industry partner. Okay, because if you're starting a company and you're on your own, you've got no brand awareness, nobody knows who you are. If you can find an industry partner that's well respected, that provides a huge amount of uh, weight to your application. And then you've got to write the application in terms of write the research strategy first, then write the specific aims, and then write the abstract. That's the order in which I do it. Once we knew that we were going to go after an aura SBIR grant, um, and using our experiences of failing with our SBR applications in the previous years, we kind of had, uh, we were able to knock the rough edges off our applications and make them much more polished and much more forward thinking. Because you can't think about a phase one grant, which is feasibility, without thinking how that's going to translate into phase two. You know, what's the bigger picture? And how are you going to prove and evaluate that bigger picture in phase two? So we were able to present a, a, a phase one project to ORIP that was highly innovative in terms of the, its approach to science education, but also had a forward thinking, a bigger picture attached to it so that the reviewers can kind of get a glimpse of, you know, what's the bigger impact for this, you know, rather than it just being, we're going to make a little game. So writing an SBIR is very different from writing, let's say, an R01 or an academic grant. And when we started out, we got help from uh, Julie Turner Collins at Georgia Tech, who is the state resource for SBIR grant applications. She's there to help you change your grant writing style to an SBIR. And when we first sent the first draft to her, it came back covered in red ink. And we, me and Jim, we'd written grants together for a decade and been quite successful at it. And we go back and we're like, oh, this is different. There's always resources within your state people who are there to help you and guide you through that. And we also got help from the Georgia Bio Business Center on campus here, the Small Business Development Center here, and the Technology Commercialization Office, who all offered resources in terms of you know, eyes on pages, giving you feedback, telling you how things should be structured, working with budgets and things like that. When you start thinking about phase two, if you've, if you've waited until you've done phase one, you're, you're too late. You need to be thinking about phase two from the day you start doing phase one. As soon as you start doing that research and the feasibility, you've got to be looking at phase two. Because part of phase two is a 12-page commercialization plan. And that is a, an actual business plan that you have to present. And if you don't make a good case for being financially viable and profitable with the product that you're producing, you're, you, won't, you won't get funded.